Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So today it's time for me to once again open my drawer, my top sacred drawer, my top secret most sacred drawer. If you don't know, if you're new here, this is my top drawer in my vanity where I keep my most used makeup to hand. Other than palettes, because they don't fit in there, and foundations because it's a whole other drawer for those. This is my go-to products where I need them at hand at any given day and moment and time because they are my most used, my primers, my concealers, my powders, my blushes, my bronzers, my highlights, my brow products, my mascaras, everything that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, the absolute best of the best, my most used products live in here. And I filmed this video maybe a year ago. So for goodness sakes, I thought it's time to delve back in there because things have left the drawer and new things have entered the drawer. And it's time I fessed up and showed you what is inside my most used top drawer. So let's go. Okay, so here she is in all her glory. So I keep the things, the kind of most used things at the front and in this section here. And then these are kind of the th things that I don't use as much at the very back. So starting off at the very back, this is like my glossy type lip products. These kind of don't fit how I'd like them to where I store the rest of my lip products, like lipsticks and things like that. So this is where I keep my kind of most used lip glosses. So in here, I've got my two shades of the Fenty Gloss Bomb. I've got my two shades of the Lipophoria Gloss from Natasha Denona. And I've got the YSL shade of the Lip Water Stain, which isn't so much a gloss as a stain, but it kind of fits in that category. And then my one shade of the Hourglass Gloss. So these aren't necessarily my most used lips products, but they are my most used gloss type formulas because all my lipsticks sit in my lipstick holder on the top of my vanity. And then in this little compartment is all kind of like little minis that I sometimes use, but not all of the time. So there's a mini of the Hourglass powders. This is their loose setting powder, which I barely ever use. Um, and then this is Dim Light, which I don't use very often, but it's just a nice place to keep them when I know where they are, because they tend to get lost as minis, you know, which is not what you want. And then I have this single eyeshadow from MAC. This is Trompe Lol which was, I think it's a limited edition from their Glow Play collection. This is like the ultimate perfect kind of brow arch highlighting shade. So I just keep that in there. I do reach that for, for that a fair amount if I'm just doing very natural makeup. So that just sits in there. And then that's my Patrick Tar brow pomade, which I keep in that same little section as well because it just fits really nicely in with all of that stuff. As you can see, it's an absolute state. So moving on to this section of lovely jubbliness, this is all my like brow mascara. So like, I guess brow lashes and concealer kind of lives in here along with my mini of the airbrush flawless setting spray from Charlotte Tilbury. Cause if I am going to use a setting spray, then that's the one that I will use and it just fits in there so nicely. So I also have my Mac prep and prime, which is like a sort of oil controlling type primer. I just use this on my nose to stop the oils from coming through my foundation. There are only now two mascaras, two full-size mascaras in here. And um, they used to be like three or four, but I have now cut down to only using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk and the Dark Star from Pat McGrath. Those are like the only mascaras that live in here now. Although actually, I tell a lie. I have this mini from Chanel. This is the Le, Le Volume de Chanel, which I got a sample from one of my Chanel orders. And I use this, if I'm using the Pat McGrath, oops, as you know, this is super huge, big fat lashes. So I don't love this on my lower lashes. So if I'm using this one, I'll use this on my lower lashes, but Pillow Talk is perfect on lower lashes. So yeah, I do like to use a sample on the lower lashes sometimes. 
So concealer wise, I have two concealers in here, but multiples of both. So this is my Pat McGrath concealer. I have it in three shades. I have it in 10, 12 and 14. 14 is like perfect for me in the summer, but in winter, I really struggle with their undertones. Um, 10 is too light on its own, very, very stark but it's a nice undertone and 12 is super peachy, but are out the same shade. So I kind of tend to mix between these, these two at the moment, but that's like my Holy Grail concealer. And I do also keep the Hourglass concealer in here, although I literally never reach for it because I just prefer the Pat McGrath really, but I do try to use it occasionally. So I have my winter shade sepia perfect winter shade and june is my perfect summer shade much better shades in the hourglass for me but i do prefer the pat mcgrath and then i also have two eyebrow pencils the hourglass this is their original brow sculpting pencil i don't really use this like i'm just i keep it in here because i want to use it up because it was expensive but i don't love it um this is my kat von d signature brow pencil and the one that i love the most it's, i've repurchased this a hundred times i should say kvd beauty now um brow pencil but yeah this is my favorite brow pencil and really the only one i want to use but i am trying to get through the hourglass because i can't just throw things away um and then i have my brow gel from benefit that's always in there and also at the moment is this p louise base which i can't tell you i'm just really not using i just don't love it i prefer using concealer and setting with powder but i have kept it in there because i'm still kind of playing around with it so next up we have this little compartment over here so this is um blushes i mean all of these sections is basically my favorite blush or cheek products in general basically in these two compartments there's no reason why these are in here and these are in here it's just how they fit best and like trying to keep some kind of organization I guess so in here we've got my one of my favorite highlighters from Fenty this is afternoon snack and mo honey and as you can see a very well used and loved one I have three Laura Mercier blushes absolutely love all three of these blushes I think she makes really nice blush formula so this is fresco um grapefruit and peach so those are the three shades of Laura Mercier blush that I keep in my top drawer love all three beautiful formula beautiful blushes I then have one NARS blush, which you'll know what it is. It is Orgasm X, one of my absolute favorites and always in my top drawer. One of my, well, my absolute all time favorite MAC blush. And this is Pinch Me, just the perfect everyday, like neutral blush from MAC, my absolute favorite. It's like definitely a go-to if I'm not really sure what to do with my cheeks and I just you know have something going on on my lips or eyes and I need a blush that will just go with anything that's kind of one of my most reached for um a Becca blush this is Tiger Lily one of their um shimmering what is it a luminous blush just says luminous blush okay I made that bit up but it is a gorgeous orange really beautiful blush use this more so in the summer but yeah, one of my favourites. And then I have a mini of Becca's Opal in here. Their highlight again, I do like this, but I'm not reaching for this as much lately because I have found lots of highlighters I love this year. So obviously, just before we get into these ones, you will notice that my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer doesn't live in here because it is too large. Same thing goes for her highlight. But other than those, these are kind of, apart from like the massive oversized products, these are where... The majority of like my absolute favorite products live so we've got my ysl highlight a lot of people ask me about this one and also the galon highlight because these were kind of the two that i was loving before like highlight gate hit um so people will still want to know if i'm still using these and i am i still use and love both of these highlights this is like my holy grail for a very long time i'm not 100 percent sure if it's still my holy grail i'm still kind of working that out back and forth between the new ones but it's certainly a much loved this is the terracotta nude by the way and this is the ysl what's it called touche all over glow 
So those are two of my most loved highlights. I have a couple of samples in here that I've yet to use. This is a Chanel Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluid and one of their foundations. I keep like little samples that I want to get around to using just in there to remind me. Uh, Chanel Blush Elegance, my only kind of permanent, well I thought it was permanent but it's been discontinued now, but yeah my kind of only Chanel, standard Chanel blush in there. Same thing, this is a Tom Ford in the shade Flush, my only Tom Ford blush and an absolute good one. I've got two, my two favourite Patrick Tarr blushes. So this is She's Seductive. Again, another one that I will definitely reach for when I'm not really sure what to do or my eye or lip is quite intense. This is a great sort of neutral, not overwhelming, just very soft, subtle, natural blush. And then She's Adorable, which looks super crazy bright, but is very subtle actually so those are two of my favorites from Patrick Tarr and then at the front we've got the I need a nude glow from Natasha Nona an absolute favorite now one of my top favorite highlighters of all time beautiful and then on this side we've got the Chanel Le Chains blush again like one of my favorite products of the year an absolute stunning blush absolutely gorgeous and not just the pattern but the shade just the perfect like copper very much like she's seductive and um the mac pinch me it's one of those that you can just wear every single day of your life and it's never going to clash with anything or overwhelm anything obviously you guys know my gucci bronzer is living in here it's well used the pattern is like almost gone absolutely love that bronzer it's just glorious my Shantakai Cheek Duo in the shade Coral. Again, one of my favourite products of the year. You can see how well loved this has been. Both of these shades in here, the highlight and the blush, are just absolute heaven. Absolutely adore both of these. Really have not got to use it very much recently because there's just been so many highlights coming out. But I really do love this one. It's just a special little compact. Whoops. The Pat McGrath, I actually had to make space. I cleared out a couple of things, a couple of blushes from here to make space for this one because it just had to go in here. I was going to keep this on my vanity, but oh, I mean, it's just sickening to look at, isn't it? It's glorious. Just one of the most luxurious and dreamy products. I really love using this. It's just so luxurious. And I actually really love the highlight as well because if the highlight sucked, it doesn't really matter how luxurious the packaging is, but it really does live up to what's on the outside. And then we've got, again, one of my favorite blushes of all time, favorite products of the year. This is the Hourglass at Night Blush. It just really doesn't look like anything special. It really looks like it's got no shit color to it as well, like no shade in there, but it really does look gorgeous on the cheeks. And it's just, again, the perfect everyday blush that I know is not gonna cause me any issues or be too much. It just blends out beautifully and has a very natural finish on the skin. And then this is a very boring product. This is just Max Next to Nothing powder that I think is discontinued now, but a huge hole of pan in there. And this is what I use to set my concealer on my lid. I don't use these concealers. I'll just grab any old concealer at the moment. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way concealer that I don't love under my eyes, but is a great full coverage eyeshadow primer. So I set, I will put some concealer on my eyelids and then I'll set it with this powder just because it's there and I don't love that on my face, so that's how I use it. And then over here, we've got a little mishmash of products that just don't belong anywhere else. So we've got my Touch of Silk Canvas, which has definitely seen better days, as you can see. Luckily, my friend Morgan has um, kindly sent me a liquid version, so I'm gonna be trying the liquid version next. But that lives in there, I use it every single day I do my makeup. Same goes for my Pat McGrath under eye powder. I've switched over to the light shade now, so this one isn't quite as used and abused because I've been using the medium shade all summer, but I have now switched over to that one. And then this Le Mer powder, this has actually gazumped the By Terry powder out of my top drawer. I still use and like the By Terry powder, but because it has a color to it, it doesn't always, I don't always want to use it if I do. I mean, I rarely want to use powder anyway, but 
even when I do want to use powder, I don't always want to add a color or change the color of my foundation or add coverage. So this is just a truly translucent powder. So this one kind of has gazumped that one as far as being like the one I want most to hand. So there you have it. Those are all the products that now reside in my top drawer of my vanity. I'd love to know what's in your top drawer. Do you have a top drawer? Do you have a different scenario? Do you have a makeup bag that's there with your everyday most reach for products? Please let us know what they are in the comments section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.